Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum. Again, we're greeting you with that beautiful greeting of peace. Peace be unto you. Today, my next guest is going to come out in a second. This is some exciting, we have an exciting topic that we're going to be discussing in a minute. Sex. Everywhere you go, everything you see is promoting sex. And sometimes safe sex is put in front of the word sex. What does this mean? Condoms are being passed out at the schools. Parents now, the fathers used to be able to have some kind of say of who comes to see his daughter. And nowadays, parents and fathers are being pushed away a lot of times from from even having a say and dating is prevalent so we want to see how Islam how does this way of life the way of life of all the messengers how does it tackle this subject what's the definition of safe sex with my next guest who comes out in a minute we're gonna help you understand this a little bit better we'll be right back on the Dean show Allah. There's only one God and Muhammad is his messenger Allah, la ilaha illallah Allah, there's only one God and Jesus was his messenger Allah, la ilaha illallah I don't know why I did that, maybe it's just, maybe it's just to break the ice My next guest, Imam Siraj Wahad <laughs> Peaceful, 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 peaceful,
It's what you're saying. You do what, what you think is good for or you. Or something that you think. That's right. Okay. So the first point I want to make when yeah. we talk about safe sex is that it's going to go, okay, what, what did God say? The what creator. Did, what did the law say? What did the Lord of the worlds, what did he say about not, the issue? This is not just a Muslim God. This is the God of the heavens and it the earth and everything. There is only in it. one God. And that's why in the Quran, Allah tells Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, to tell the people of the book, the Christians and the Jews, Ilahuna wa ilahukum wahid, your God and our God is one. So there's only one God. It's not the God of the Muslims. Uh -huh. It's one God, the same creator of the heavens and the earth. Three and one or just one? No, uh, uh, just, just one. You don't want to play tricks with mathematics. No, no mathematics chicks. No ma you don't, no chicks. You, you don't one. chop them up like a pie and make them <laughs> none of that. Right. Okay. So number one, the first one. premise, the first premise is that, that, that God is the one that created us and he's the one to give us the commandments. Let me tell you the second, mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the second premise, which well, is well, well, before you go on to, let me just interject. When, when, now, just on this, uh, if you can add, you said one, does this uh, God that we worship, does, I mean, is there anything like him? Does he have any children? Does he have anything like his creation? Or when just... One of, one of the things that our scripture tells yeah. us, which is the last revelation to man given to Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing mm -hmm. be upon him, there is nothing like unto him. He is unique. There's nobody like him. He doesn't have no wife. He doesn't have children. Mm -hmm. So God is one. He's the creator of everything. He was from the beginning. He's everlasting. Uh, he, was, he didn't give birth to anyone, nor mm -hmm. was he born. So that's the one we talk about. That just about. makes yeah. so much yes. sense. Yeah. Please continue. The second thing, the second premise, which is, which is critical, um, I once was thinking about the Congressional Black Caucus. Mm -hmm. You've heard about them, the Congressional mm -hmm. Black Caucus. And, and though many people know about them, they don't know the model of the Congressional Black Caucus. Mm -hmm. the, the model of the Congressional Black Caucus is black people have, have neither permanent friends nor permanent enemies, just permanent interests. Mm -hmm. They're permanent interests. And the reason I talked about that and talking about the next premise is that it's very, it's crucial. And that is that every commandment that Allah gives us is for our own best interest. It's for our own good. It's for our own good. He doesn't need any of these things. No. So if he deprives us of something, he knows that that is best for us. Mm -hmm. if, if he would give us something yeah. that make, he makes it permissible, he makes it halal, then it's good for us. Mm -hmm. He makes it haram, not permissible, then it's no good for us. Mm -hmm. So these two premises, you can't talk about sex or safe sex or nothing until you talk about, number one, what did God command for us? You know, what's in our best interest? Now, having laid that foundation, now we can talk about safe sex. And let, me give you, let me give you some information. Mm -hmm. Let me give you some background information that I think is critical. The who, are you familiar with who? 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 Talk to us about who. H, uh, W H O, World Health Organization. Gotcha. Who? Okay. They they said that intimacy between men and women happen on this earth every day, a mm -hmm. hundred million times One, a day. A hundred million times a day. A hundred million times a day. Let, let's hold right there. We got to take a break, okay. and we'll be right back. 100 million times a day, yes. intimacy is taking place. Yes. We'll be right back on The Dean Show. Back with our Imam, Siraj Bahaj, on The Dean Show. 100 million times a day, who is giving us the statistics yes. that sex is taking place, intimacy, Yes. 100 million times a day? Uh, yes. Talk now, to us. No, well, let me say this. You know, some people, uh, it's, it's rumored that most of that takes place in New York City and Chicago, but, mm -hmm. but, but God knows best. <laughs> right? But think about that, 100 million times a day, that's a lot. Uh -huh. That results in 910,000 conceptions mm -hmm. a day. Wow. 910,000. That results in 350,000 sexually transmitted diseases. AIDS, herpes, gonorrhea, all these things. A day. A day. Wow. And you hold on to your seat. The last one, that results in 150,000 abortions a day. Those are little babies that are being put to death. 
little babies being put to death uh -huh. every day, 150,000 around the world. So the consequences of sex, while on the one hand it's enjoyable, we yeah. can't deny that. Yeah. God created it to be enjoyable, mm -hmm. right? But Allah says in Quran, وَتِلْكَ هُدُودُ اللَّهِ And these are the boundaries of Allah, just don't go past them. Now, uh, He wants us to enjoy ourselves yeah. with the intimacy between a man and his wife. Marriage? Of course. Only marriage. Uh -huh. Because other than that, it's out of the boundaries. Like like a basketball game without foul lines and everything? Got to have, gotta have foul lines. Yeah, right? okay. See? So these are the perimeters. These are the perimeters. What God has said, we stay in those perimeters. You he have to stay in it because if you don't, you're going to get that. You're yeah. going to get 350,000 sexually transmitted disease, mm -hmm. right? You're going to get 150,000 abortions a day, mm -hmm. right? This is as a direct disobedience to Allah the Almighty. Yeah. Now, when you understand the beauty of intimacy, when a man and woman comes together and the possibility of creating new life, yeah. you know, and, you know, it's interesting uh, recently, I was reading the Quran. This is the what the verbatim word of God Almighty, the Quran. Absolutely, the exact words of God Almighty. Okay, this yes. is not written by uh, you know some person who we it's don't not, know. It's this not is from. It's not. It's not even the words of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. The Quran is the words of God that was revealed to the last Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. Even as God revealed the Torah to Moses and revealed the Injil of the Gospel to Jesus. Gotcha. So this, this last revelation in the Qur'an. So um, uh, I was thinking about the prophets, right? Mm -hmm. How we love them. We love all of them. And, and I was thinking the other day about Prophet Moses. Mm -hmm. In the Qur'an says, Allah mentioned in the Qur'an, and we inspired Ummah Musa, the mother of Moses. Mm -hmm. Jesus had a mother. Muhammad had a mother and a father. Moses had a, a mother and a father. Yeah. So the, the, the results of these, well, we're going to put Jesus in a special category. Yeah. We'll come back to that in a moment. But the result of all of these prophets were the results of their mother and father getting together. And look what they produced. They produced all of these, 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 these great men. Mm -hmm. So, so, the, so the, the, the union of a man and a woman and the pleasure can create such beautiful people as the messengers of God. And the reason I put Jesus in a, in a special category, because uh -huh. we know as Muslims, we believe that his mother Mary uh, was a, a virgin, and, and she didn't have, uh, a prophet Jesus didn't have a father, yeah. but it's a miraculous uh, a birth. But putting that aside, you know, um, no, no woman can get pregnant without uh -huh. a man. Yeah. Somewhere there's a man involved. But we're just trying to get to know each other. You know, I want to get married. I want to get down like you're telling me. But how do I get to know somebody, problem. you know? Let me tell you the problem. Yes. The problem is we have a lot of tasters. Tasters. Uh, you know about Ta the tasters? Taste testing? Taste Test testing. driving? <laughs> there you go, right? You can't do that yourself because what happens, the man says, okay, come on, honey. I want to get to know you. And then after he gets to know her, he says, okay, the next... Uh -huh. Let me get to know you, and let me get to know you, and yeah. let me get to know you. You know, um, you remember Wilt Chamberlain? Wilt Chamberlain, the basketball player? The famous basketball yeah. player, one of the great basketball players uh -huh. ever. He bragged in his book that he slept with 20,000 women. He got to know 20,000 women? He got to women. know 20,000 women. <laughs> and I just heard recently, I was in the, um, I, was, I, was, I, was, um, I was listening to a radio station, and I can't confirm it, but apparent, according to what they said, that the president of, 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 of Cuba, Castro, yeah. just now, you know, recently, maybe the last couple of days, said he slept with 35,000 women. 35,000 women. 35,000 women. So they fit up there in this 100 million somewhere. That's a lot of women. So, That's a lot. But are, are, are women, I mean... And then what happens, when you, so when you look at that, uh -huh. is like, okay, it's ugly. Mm -hmm. it's, it's ugly. And what we tried to do is that a man and a woman, you know, they come together, they get married first, mm -hmm. and then they have the intimacy. Why? Because that's what God said. He said it, and we as Muslims, as believers, we're the servants of Allah, and if he says it, 
then it's good for us. So it's not your opinion now. This is it's what the not, Creator is saying. It's not my opinion or your opinion mm -hmm. or anyone's opinion. It's what the Creator himself is saying. Gotcha. Now, you're telling us that, look, that woman, she wants to get married, and now the guy, she says, I understand that, but he's different. He's not like the rest. What do you got to say about this? Well, unfortunately, he is like the rest, because if he wasn't like the rest, he would be a God-fearing man. Mm -hmm. And because there are, there are others, by the way, Christians and Jews, who, who believe that you shouldn't have intimacy until you get married. Yeah. So it's not something that's just for the Muslims, yeah. but other you know, God-fearing people, because it's also in their scripture. Because yeah. we believe that all the scripture comes from the same source. Yeah. It actually comes from God. It comes uh -huh. from Allah. Yeah. So he, he's the same one that revealed the Torah, the, the Injil, or the Gospel, uh, and the Quran is the yeah. same one God. But how can it be that, I mean, even in the high schools nowadays, you'll see that the condoms are being given out, and this is being promoted, okay, Everyone is doing it. Everyone is dating. So you're telling us everyone is wrong? Anyone, let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. You know, what, see, we, the, the problem, Eddie, that we have in a society that we give in. Yeah. We give in, right? So he said, well, you know, they're having sex anyway, so give them a condom. I do agree. No, uh, no, let, let, me, let me be real with you, yeah. right? I, I, I do agree that, uh, you know, if you're doing it illegally, yeah. right? Then I was. Then it's better to use a condom. Yeah. Less chance of disease and mm -hmm. you know preg unwanted pregnancies and things like that. But I'm not giving in. Yeah. I'm, we're saying is that you ought not have sex until you get married. And there are a number of of um, high school students and college students who are living by that creed, who don't necessarily call themselves religious people, but understand the dangers of having intimacy before marriage. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, again, it's. it's it's, you know, if you want to be the servant of God, then this is the price that we have to, we have to pay. I, I, I give you another example. You know, people like alcohol. People yeah. drink. People like to get high. They like to smoke marijuana. Yeah. Well, as Muslims, we can't. God doesn't allow us. So we're not going to smoke marijuana. If he gave us the permission to do it, we would do it. Yeah. If he said we can drink alcohol, we could. Yeah. In fact, the Muslims drink alcohol. Allah mentioned there's a very interesting verse in Quran, Let taqrabu salat wa antum sukara hatta ta'lamu ma taqulun. Oh, you believe, do not approach prayer while you are intoxicated until you understand what you're saying. This was revealed in the Quran before alcohol became prohibited. So there were times, there were times when Muslims drink alcohol. Mm -hmm. Why? It was permitted. But once the God Almighty said, stay away from alcohol. Yeah. You know, it is an abomination, so then the Muslims, they stop. And, and it is written that when that ayat from the Qur'an is revealed, uh, 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 leave it alone, that some Muslims who were actually drinking, but when the revelation came, they simply turned it over and spilled it out in the streets of Medina. Yeah. And they said it was flowing down the streets of Medina because God Almighty had said that it wasn't permissible. As long as God permits it, we can do it. Mm -hmm. After he says it's, pro it's prohibited, then we can no longer do it. So would the first step be that acknowledge that there is a creator, that he knows what's best, he's the most wise, and now are there consequences, just like at work, you disobey your boss, once, twice, you can get fired. Are there consequences for following your passions and desires and not following what your creator told you to do? Talk you know something us. interesting that you said that, Eddie? There are two consequences, mm -hmm. two possible consequences. Number one is right now, while we're living on this earth right now. And that's some of the things that I talked about. Those sexually, are those, okay. sexually transmitted diseases and, and all the other consequences of, of, mm -hmm. of that. Or even imagine um, a man sleeping with a virgin woman, she thinking that he's gonna marry her and he sleeps with her and then leaves her. Totally emotionally destroys her, huh? Absolutely, totally destroys her, right? And on, on the one hand, on the other hand, you will see that God will let you do it. Mm -hmm. Listen, he let you do it. Even though he said, this is, this is what I want. And you said, well, I'm, I'm, going, I'm, going, I'm going to do it. God is going to let you do it. But then the punishment in the hereafter is something altogether different. Ne next life now. There is a next life. And that when this life is over, that's not it. We're going to die. That's a fact. Kullu nafsin ikatul maut. Allah says in the Quran, every soul shall taste of death. When are we going to die? مَكَنَنِي نَفْسٍ أَنْتَ مُوتَ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ لَا كِتَابٍ مُؤَجِّلًا No soul can die except by the permission of Allah. 
is already written in the book. Mm -hmm. So we're going to die. Ain't no question about that. Ain't nobody lived forever. Ronald Reagan died. You, there you go. Michael Presidents, Jackson died. There you go. Okay? Mm -hmm. You and I will die. We're going to die. That's just the way it is. More than that, prophets died. Mm -hmm. Right? So none of us are exempt. Yeah. But the point is, is that now we have to face him, our creator, on the day of judgment. And how he's going to judge us for all the life that we lived. Everything that we did. He gave us commandments. Now you got to pay a price. Even in this country and every country, you have law. Yeah. And if you violate the law, then you're going to be punished. Mm -hmm. If man can, can, can create laws and punish the people for violating those laws, like Bernie Madoff. You remember him, the guy who gypped people out of billions of dollars? Yeah, yeah. He's yes. in prison now because prison, yes. he broke the law. Mm -hmm. You know, people in prison, they break the law. What about the law of God? So in the hereafter, we'll be punished by God's punishment if, we, if he doesn't forgive us for committing that sin or violation of the law of God. We're going to, when we come back, God willing, we're going to be discussing some of the benefits of doing it the right way, doing it how your creator wants you to do it. <laughs> we'll be right back on the day show. Peaceful, 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 we're here with peaceful, Imam Sarat peaceful, on the Dean peaceful, Show. Precautions. Peaceful. Sometimes when you're in it, you've already been blinded by love. How do you not... Let it get that far to that state. Precautions. Talk yeah, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a very interesting verse in Quran. Allah says, La taqrabu zina. Mm -hmm. Don't go near fornication mm -hmm. and adultery. Never mind. Not, don't, don't do it. Of course, don't do it. But not only don't do it, don't go near it. Mm -hmm. And God, in His infinite wisdom, he puts us in a situation, he tries to put human beings in a situation where they won't get in trouble. And let me, let me give an example. You know, here's a Muslim, he's a, he's a strong Muslim, say, oh, I'm a believer, I'm strong, and don't worry, I can be alone with this beautiful woman and I won't touch her. Well, mm -hmm. maybe you won't. Yeah. But then again, maybe you will. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is that there's a tradition of our Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, that said that when a man and a woman are alone, by themselves in seclusion, mm -hmm. then shaitan, the devil, you know that character, mm -hmm. he's a third party. And, and shaitan, the devil, all he wants to do is get us to disobey Allah. Those satanic forces are there. They're real. Yeah. These spirits are real. Christians talk about them. Jews talk about them. Muslims talk about them. Call it the devil. Call it Satan. Call it shaitan. Call them jinn, whatever you want to call them. They're real spirits, and, mm -hmm. they're, and, they're, and, they're, and their desire, the evil spirits desire for us to do, to do wrong. So a wise man doesn't put himself in position where he may disobey his creator. Mm -hmm. And this is why Allah is giving us the warning. Don't put yourself in that position where you can commit zina. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to be alone with a, a, a woman who's not your, of course, your wife or your, or your, or your, or your child or your, your sister or your mother. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be alone with a strange woman by, by yourself. So, um, so we take our precautions. Yeah. And then here, you have to police yourself. Mm -hmm. and, you know, let me tell you something. It's very interesting, very mm -hmm. interesting tradition. I don't know anyone more pious than Prophet Muhammad, peace and bless him, so. pious, right? He was in Mecca, and I don't know a city more holy than Mecca. Mm -hmm. He was in, city, in the city of Mecca during the month of Ramadan, mm -hmm. right? You have the messenger of God in the city of Mecca during the month of Ramadan. During the last 10 nights, he was in Itakaf. He was in seclusion in the masjid. And then one of his wives came to visit him. And after the visit, he said, let me walk you home. Now here's the messenger of Allah in the city of Mecca during the month of Ramadan, walking home with his wife. Mm -hmm. And some of his companions come by and they see him and they start to walk quickly. He called them back. He said, this is my wife. Messenger of God in the city of Mecca. Making things straight, putting things in... Yeah. Making sure, he's letting us know, to let them know, I'm not walking with no strange woman. Yeah. This is my wife. How much more should we? Mm -hmm. Now, we walk all the time. We, we know we're walking. We owe an explanation to, to somebody. We're walking in the street with a woman. Who's that woman? Mm -hmm. Who's that woman that yeah. you're walking with? And so the protection of the community mm -hmm. is that when we walk into the community and we see a man walking with a woman, a Muslim man walking with a Muslim woman, okay, sure, we should assume that's his sister or his wife. or his, We should assume that, but not necessarily so. So the protection of the Muslim community is a brother say, oh, Imam Siraj, by the way, this, here, this is my wife. Safe sex? So that's safe sex? 
Yes. When we opened up the show, we talked about safe sex. Hot topic. It's all over. Sex, sex, sex. Now you put the safe. We're talking about marriage. Yes. Doing it how your creator wants you to do it. That's the only way. And we're almost out of time. Now the precautions. Now some of the benefits. Some of the rewards. The benefits of sex? Is that are you, are at, you asking at, me? Are you asking me? You see this big smile on my face? <laughs> So we don't shun away from this. Oh, this is no, not something no, that we're like, we hide our, no, put our heads down. No. It's a good thing. It is a good thing. Let me tell you something. It's natural. That's the idea. Uh -huh. God created it. Yeah. And he created us to have a good time. Mm -hmm. We should have a good time. Only with our wives, though. Within the parameters. Wives and husbands, within the boundaries that God has laid down for us. So now, this is when man and woman come together, they do it the right way in marriage. The brother, he's getting really excited something's building up the woman wants to be held in love yes how do they go about it the halal the permissible way yes. you got to find out the this woman who is her guardian who guardian. is her who is her is it her father who's the one that's going to give her away because in islam we respect the father mm -hmm. we don't go sneaking around with his daughter no sneaking we, around no sneaking around we respect the father we go to the father and say you know sir i'm interested in your daughter you know i like to have a formal meeting and i like for you to get to know me and to know my family mm -hmm. so this is the respect this is the brotherhood of islam uh, none of you really believes until you want for your brother what you want for yourself now if you you know you, 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 you want someone to come to you. If you have a daughter, you want someone, you expect, to expect that young man to come to you. Mm -hmm. Then why not go to that woman's father or her guardian is? Maybe her father has died. Maybe it's her brother. Maybe it's her uncle. Maybe it's her grandfather. But that's the way we do it. We, we, don't, we, don't, we don't sneak around. We don't go to sneak around the hotels and motels and back of people's car. This is ugly. This is ugly to Allah and this is ugly to civilized people. We do it right and, 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 and there's joy. And I tell you one thing, I tell you the truth, when you sneak around, you can't really enjoy it. Something happens psychologically to you because it's not, it's not, this is not right. And you know it's not right. It's in your very fitra. It's in your very nature to know that this is not right. So you don't have to hide and sneak and wonder if someone is watching me and, and you know, you don't have to do all of that. That's the beautiful thing about doing it the right way. That's the beautiful thing about safe sex. Safe sex is only through marriage. No other way. No other way. There's none of this dating in Islam. No Get dating in Islam. You the wrong brother said way. to me, Imam Siraj, I'd like to take your, your daughter to dinner. Yeah. No problem. You can take my daughter to dinner. You and my daughter and me. And you. And me. Uh -huh. we get, that's how we go to dinner. Okay, so go back like we started. Realize that there is a structure, a way for us to live, and that's according to not our desires, but the way the Creator wants us to live. Absolutely. And if you want to do safe sex, do it in marriage. you got to do it only in marriage. Only in marriage. Only in that's marriage. what we mean by safe sex. That's the only safe sex there is. Thank you very much for Thank being you. with Thank us. Thank you. May God Lord. Almighty Allah reward you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. And thank you for sitting tight through another episode of The Dean Show. We really hope that you got to benefit. It's something rational, logical, that there is a creator behind this magnificent universe and everything in it. And it's only right that you acknowledge that he loves you. He has manifested his love. He's given you so much. And now, how do you give back? You give back by living life according to how he wants you to live. And when you do that, that's how you get that peace. That's how you become successful, not only in this life, but also in the next. We'll see you next time here on The Dean Show. Until then, assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you. No speech is better than to do that. To call people to Allah and to do the work. No speech is better. No, nothing is better than that. Is it true that if one person on the... Allah giving you the ability to guide someone with Allah's permission, the Creator's permission that is better than everything in this world. Better than the whole world and everything that's in it, in, in another narration, it's better than the best of wealth. But if we really felt that, Eddie, would we not be give, out giving down? And this is something that we encourage all the MSAs, all the Dawah organizations, the masjids to get this. We want to print more. We give these to the non-Muslims for free, for free, for free. We want our brothers in humanity to become our brothers in faith. It's cold, it's late, everybody's sleeping. I arise and ask Allah to forgive me. Oh Allah, you see, 
Oh Allah, you know all the sins I do. I turn to you to forgive my sins and my heart. I'm your sinful slave. You're my loving Lord. I'm the one who runs away. Oh Allah, guide me.